it's that Indian cooking stuff, isn't it? Well, let's make sure we can see you okay because I'm quite close to the wall. Yeah, we can. What you got, mate? I've got a tin of butter. Gee. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll see, watch it jump. You ready? Look at that. I love BBC News. Hey, you alright? It's BBC News. Yeah. Yo, can I be in your YouTube channel? <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> With a haircut like that? <laughs> We're just doing magnet fishing. Magnet fishing? Yeah. yeah do you know what, what that is? What's that? What if you find a bomb? It's, what if I found a bomb? I would let you know, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> man. Here's the interesting thing, getting it off. Okay. That's it. Oh, look at this now. <laughs> that was cast. Seriously, you think I'm making this up? This is a magnet. Nigel, can you tell me about that magnets? Right, sometimes with these, on the cover for the lock, yeah, they'll VR. have things like VR, yes. Victoria Regina, but I think this is probably a slightly later one. Yep. Because that is probably brass. Yeah, it is brass, as you can see. But you'd have to clean it up. So, it a brush. Yeah. Yeah. So, you've got, you got yeah, tools to buy. Yeah, and obviously, <laughs> I've got a coin. I mean, I can't believe I've got three things out of the river from one car. Oh, you've got more on there as well. I was really. I think so. Oh, I see. Okay. I was. So, I was actually thinking. Pennies and twos, fives, tens, really common to find in the water. Oh, okay. A lot of people put them in there as offerings. You're so. my fun. Hang on a minute. Let me just see. Can I just see what monarch is on that? Ah. That is. That's Elizabeth, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Nothing special. What do you think that is then? That a two pence? That's two pence, yeah. That's quite a recent That'll one. That'll be over for like 1990 because before okay. then they were solid copper. Now they have a steel core on them because right. the copper's worth more than the money is. So they made them with a steel oh, core and copper coat them now. I got, so I, I didn't realise what I'd taken out. I just thought, oh, we've got nothing. They're That's, known as chav cans. Yeah, yeah, mm. we know about that. That's the old helium. Is it the, is it the yeah. laughing gas? There's a spring. Not interested in that so much. Oh, we have got quite a lot. This is a bonanza. I tell you what, <laughs> I'm starting to get into this. After his first throw. <laughs> My first throw, seriously. So another coin that looks like a 1p. Yep. If I got a hate me, I'd be quite excited. Not These magnetic, people... unfortunately. Oh, really? Yep. You never get a hate me. These are people throwing 1p coins into the river to make a wish, I think. Yep. So I've just unwished their wishes. I think that's it. Oh, no, bottle top. It'd be great if we got something from the, you know, from the war. Well, I tell you what, for a first throw, I'm kind of excited by just, by that. And what's that, though? How that is part of an umbrella. Part of an umbrella. Yep. So, what you've got there is made in England, yes. and then the start embossed with FB. I don't know what it means, I'd have to uh, okay. have a little search. Okay, FB. Ooh. That wasn't a king I recognised, Francis Bacon. Yeah, but listen. It's still an interesting find. It's still interesting. FB makes locks. And, and it's British made. And it's British made. Made in England. Somebody with a bicycle. Right. Uh, huh. Should we go again? Yeah, go for it. So <laughs> <laughs> Idiot. Moly. The bloody hell was that? <sighs> Great. Nigel, this is great. Guys, honestly, I'm really loving this. <laughs> it's a thing. Told you, it's addictive. And you after two throws. throws. Yeah, you never know what's coming. Well, do you next think that's good after two throws? Am I doing okay? Well, you're finding things, that's oh, the yeah, main thing. Things. That looks like a hate me, I can't really tell. Is there any writing on the camera? Oh, bite lock, vape. Oh, he's doing well here, look. And you was only talking about vapes yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness, okay, okay, so someone's, 
Someone lost their bike. I'm just doing a bit of detective work here. We got, find hundreds. It got cut. You can find a lot, do you? Yeah. Hundreds of bike locks, bike yeah. Bike was stolen, lock was cut, bike owner upset, throws it in the river. They are becoming a pain, the amount of them we're finding in there at the moment. Oh, that's annoying. That's a vape. That's ultra modern and quite annoying. You don't want to be finding those. This is interesting. That is a squash broom handle. A squash broom <laughs> handle? You can see the thready part on the yeah. end of it. Yeah. From, from back in the day? Mm, Maybe? Yeah. More recent? It's all plastic coated. Cheap and cheerful, isn't it? Yeah, and very squashed. It's got a thread on it there, <laughs> you can see. Okay, we've got another of these canisters. A number of people, I know it's all the same guy using the helium, but someone's got a, a nasty habit. You can find a hundred of them at one location. Well, it's pretty trashy, isn't it, really? Yep. Ooh. Oh, oh, there's another one. I keep thinking I'm going to find a World War II bullet. <laughs> and, uh-huh. The coins are going up in value as well. You've got a 5p on them. <laughs> <laughs> another coin. The amount of coinage in rivers, you could almost get this to pay for itself. Um, Again, I'm sort of hoping that I could get a, a monarch before Elizabeth. That would be good. Yeah, only if it's stuck to sunny cows because they're not magnetic. Ah, I see, I see. That's why older coinage, oh, I have found oh, them before, but they've yeah, been in bags of mixed coinage because a lot of European money is magnetic. Yeah. So take a look, there we go. I mean, you've got, you've got an old 5p there. No, not an old one, it's quite a new one. Yeah. That's someone making a very expensive wish. Magnets are weird, aren't they? <laughs> Does it cause any health problems working with a magnet the whole time? Do you ever get feel sick or anything? Or? No. I don't think it's they hurt your fingers when you trap them against bridges. They do crack yeah, bones quite nicely. I believe that. So a lot of coins. What about that? Seriously. The key question, Nigel, is why you love it. I thought it's just different. It's just getting you out. You've got no worries. You just get on with it. Your focus is on the water. And it's just, I don't know, it's, it is really relaxing. It's energetic, it. but it's relaxing. And you always are like, on the hunt. You want to find something better. Yeah. You find something good, you want to find something better. And it just keeps pushing you to keep throwing. What's the best thing you found today? Today, um, a cooking pot, believe it or not. A cast iron cooking pot hanging over a fire. Probably about 19th century one. Really? Yeah. Uh, and that's really cool. You've had a nice pedal, haven't you? Yeah, a really nice pedal. Uh, you know, pedal. sounds like a pedal, yeah, but it, it's BSA off. It's a push bike. Oh, okay, from, from back in the day. 1942. Yep. Yeah. And it's a. Um, Air, a Airborne. Airborne. Generation 2. Yeah. Well, World War 2. Do you think these glasses are necessary for. When the sun's water. shining off the water, yeah, to be honest with you, it will I... help. The, the polarised ones, they do help. <laughs> We're not quite in the. Yeah, it's, it's, it's getting on for late afternoon here, but I can see how this is a lovely afternoon out. It's, yeah. it's got everything, it's like a detective story out <laughs> Yeah. Maybe we should see, before we start, we should see the pot. Have we got enough, we've got enough radio wise. Oh. I think so, yeah, we can cut. Something yeah. yeah. You think? <coughs> Bangle? That, Tim. I would say, is probably a bangle, yes. Coins, coins, coins. It's weird to think we've gone, we've kind of gone cashless now. This may be. It's because no one's got any left, it's all in the river. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Nice little screw. Oh, oh, there we are, that's quite interesting. That is a scaffold tube joiner. Oh, okay. Again, I'm trying to be careful here. <laughs> yeah. Wow, this magnet is so strong. <laughs> wow. You can see just so much there. Plenty of money. He's on the 10 P's now, look. Yeah. <laughs> Do a TV series, guys. Oh, I've got a key. Somebody's front door key. There we go. Oh, sorry. Sorry. 
sound for this. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. Oh, no, it's an Uber bike. Okay. No, line bike. A line bike. Yep. Ah. So this is your, your AJ. So, AJ, yeah. what have you just pulled out here? Um, <laughs> it's a lot like the electric hire bikes. Do you get those a lot? Yeah, and the voice scooters and everything. You've got to wonder why someone would... The yeah, Boris bikes, we've got so many of the Boris bikes. I'll tell you what, this is... Just give us a Thanks, man. I'll leave it there for a second. Sorry. Um, I'm just, just going to swoop this over. I'm just getting, so I'll just do a little shot. So, um, line bike, and even relatively short time. Look at the snails, the slugs. that's insane that's a great that's i suppose not something you're going to say that's a great find but no but it's got a battery in it so it's better out of the water yeah yeah i mean it's good to, you don't want this in the river what will you do with this out of interest that they will probably collect believe it or not yeah well good for them there's a the number on there uh, they would have been paid by the insurance but what they do is take them back and use them for parts so just say that again with me with my camera just say what will they do with that Normally they collect them, they're all insured, the insurance would have been paid out on them, but they take them back and use them for parts. Oh good, I'm pleased, I mean that's well done AJ, because how did you get that, what did you, what's your, oh is that? It's a hook. Okay, so that's not a magnet, that's a no, proper, yeah. no. It hooked it like in between them. Yeah. Sometimes with them you see a lot of them, because of these can there's be, crayfish. yeah crayfish in there, look. <laughs> Where? In there. Oh my god, that's what this camera is for, guys. That's absolutely unreal. Sorry, I'm not in the way. Do you want to, you, you get it as well. You get it, get it out, my dear. Hey, AJ, that's fine, leave it. And, uh, that's, that's great. That's ridiculous. It's reversing. So let's just, yeah. this could be a great little thing. This crayfish, hello mate has just been liberated from a line They live bike. in there. <laughs> Sorry, see they live in all the okay. slime and everything in the back there. Just do this one thing with you. This crayfish has just been liberated from this line bike which someone threw in the river and which AJ has hooked with this beautiful steel four-pronged hook and all these snails are now trying to work out what on earth has happened. And crayfish, you're about to go back in the water. Don't you worry, my friend. We won't leave you on the towpath. <laughs> are we live here? Yeah, we are, yes. Oh! So, look, firstly, apologies for these, but I just thought I needed to bring some proper kit if I was going to be a magnet fisher person, and this is all I could find. But we have just had, the three of us, four of us, five of us, <laughs> Honestly, the best time. Is it six? <laughs> anyway, we just had a most amazing time, and I have understood magnet fishing. I was always a bit puzzled by it. <laughs> I now, thanks to North Ants Magnet Fishing, I've seen how much is in the river. The fact that you've got um, just you know, lots of stuff that you don't want to find, like mm -hmm. nitrous oxide canisters and vapes and so on. But turn this around, you'll see we've got a line bike. Yeah, this is just ridiculous. Look at that. Um, the river is full of stuff, and the first time I pulled at the rope, what was the best? I got some Allen keys that yep. look as if they're 50 years old. <laughs> but um, do you understand now what we were saying about yeah, it? That yeah. I can see how you could get, you could make this a Saturday out. A lot of people on right here will understand that, that they know what I'm saying. Once you've tried it, that's when you understand yeah. it. And you don't really understand it until you have tried it. But he's yeah. really enjoyed I it. I mean, I he's got I excited have. over everything, which I is have. good. That's shown how yeah. keen he is. I have, and what's funny is that the key test of it is, sorry about these glasses again, yeah, I must apologize. When passers-by go down the towpath, how do they react, you know? And the answer is they all go, what are you doing here? Well, that's interesting. They all want to know what's going on. Yep. And I think if we were here for four or five hours, we'd all go home with something amazing. I really think that. I mean, the, the best thing so far, like just, it came out just before I arrived, was this by your, your colleague, yeah. And uh, look at that, it's a proper pot that was around. Someone was 
had that over a fire in the 1800s. So thank you, thank you, Northlands Magnets. No problems at all. And I managed to avoid magnetising my feet or destroying <laughs> and your phone my and your watch bank card. and my bank cards, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> and he hasn't broken a finger, so yeah. I'll pass you back to Aaron. Yeah. Everybody we meet, yeah. that gets one of these. Oh, listen. That's me, oh, mate. Go. That's it. I wanted. Uh, actually, I need a hat. <laughs> I went to see Brentford, who aren't my team, and I got. They get me this hat, and I keep wearing it. My wife says, "You can't. If you're a Chelsea fan, you can't wear a Brentford hat." We did that to the Weird Britain presenter yeah. as well, didn't we? And he's Can got we get a, in the photo. He's guys? got a memorabilia yeah. box. Weird Britain guy, and he, he's yeah. going to take it and keep it in that box. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to treasure three? Right, so AJ had a line bike, which you probably saw on the live, but um, that's a line bike, that's pretty manky that is. Now, these stuff down here, this is all Jeremy Vine stuff, so I'm going to show you it anyway. He had a bike lock, he had a squash broom handle, and a padlock that's got FB on it, so oh, it could actually be a fire brigade padlock. So, yeah, Terry, Aaron's going to take that. No, Terry's going to give it to Terry. Oh, okay. Loads. Department. <laughs> uh, loads of chav cans, a vape, a tin, Allen keys, um, shopping basket which AJ had as well. So, but yes, these finds here, all this money, really got Jeremy Vine excited because he, he was amazed at all this sort of stuff. But anyway, time for the final three. All right, is that on still? Yeah. So I've got some tongs. A pair of bike locks, I've got a key, a multi tool, a couple of heavy locking pins, part of an ammo crate, a door off a road lantern, a really old radio, some bling. Tissue box. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we've got some bling. Um, probably something to do with the clock. A pair of headphones, a fence pin, and a ratchet strap. Alright, well, I've got another little padlock for some reason. You might have to go a bit further across, that's quite far around. Another little padlock. How are you doing? And after that little padlock, I had another little padlock. <laughs> and after that little padlock, I had another little padlock. <laughs> What are you doing with you, little padlocks? Uh, you cover it up with a memorial pin. And then, all day we've been fishing by signs that have said the London Loop. And I found one. <laughs> you found the loop. <laughs> Maybe that's the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I think we're going to need your trolley, Paul. So, while we've been messing around with Jeremy, Paul has found a whole lot of scaffold pole. Can't leave them alone, can you? And some more poles. And down here he's got a water tank. That big long pole was mine from earlier. Then he, he got a pile in as well, so he got a pile in. Hang on, let's move up a bit, move up a bit. What else has he got? Is that some scaffold? Really? That's unlike Paul. I think he's been playing music while he's been down here. <laughs> you ain't got much of a ding. We don't like dings. Um, <laughs> jockey wheel. Everyone and all. It's a fat jockey. <laughs> CCTV? Uh, it's got a DVD drive in it. Yeah, it could be. And then, he's got a cash box. All oh, right, okay. And the cash box, is full of bags of coins. <laughs> Hang on, can't see that. There we go. He's got bags of money. Two right. peas. Two peas. I've got a crest up the trolley. Yeah, yeah so, there, you go. there we go, yes. And I've got these things, Paul's going to show you. A clamp of some description. I've got scaffolding tonight. And a gas valve by the looks of it. Don't forget your pipe. You've heard of fishing, have you heard of magnet fishing? This is a new hobby, but really hit its stride during lockdown, and it involves visiting the nation's waterways with a powerful magnet and launching it into the canal or river. And the idea isn't to pull up a magnetised fish, but metal artefacts hidden under the murky water. And the, you can get a lot of rubbish, but you can also get incredible pieces of recent history. Bullets, guns, even bombs are common to find, and magnet fishers across the country 
country have recently made headlines for finding everything from Napoleonic cannons to 1,000-year-old Viking longswords. So it's the thrill of the hunt that keeps people coming back and back again with their magnets. You never know what you're going to pull up next and you excite, experience the excitement with a few friends. So it's, it's something I had a go at myself. I've always wondered what's what's the interest in, in just dropping this thing into the river and then pulling it. But it, it's it's really quite an extraordinary experience because you simply don't know what's down there. And I wonder if you're somebody who does it, and as a result, you've built up a collection of aquatic antiquities that you are proud to display in your home. Or are you a purist who says, wait, I can't bear the, the sight of people on canal banks throwing metal into the river? Do email vine at bbc.co.uk. Don't forget your number. Text us 88291. So let us talk tonight. Nigel Lamford, keen magnet fisher who runs the YouTube channel North Ants Magnet Fishing. I did enjoy my day out with you, Nigel, I must say. Good afternoon. It was a very interesting day and we had good weather for a change. Well, indeed. Now, so, so tell me how you got into it. Um, I got offered to do it a long time before I started and I could not see what interest and what point of doing it and it was just one day I was on my way to the pub with my son and there were some people doing it by a river close to me and I just got talking to him and I had a go and I got a pole and then I had another go and then I got a lawnmower and I thought this is actually quite interesting because you just don't know what's coming so once we got home from the pub straight onto Amazon ordered some magnets they arrived the next day and that was it. We went out on our first day. We pulled out a nice BMX and a sawn-off shotgun. And that was it. I'm hooked. Well, I can see it. the sawn-off shotgun obviously is, contains a mystery of some kind, doesn't it? It must have been used in a way that was not good. Yeah, the yeah. 80s cash card, as they called it. <laughs> so, look, you, you very kindly took me down to Hayes, as outskirts of London. Nigel showed me the ropes, and you, you can hear now the moment that I had my first throw and I made my first finds. Big moment, this. First throw. <laughs> Got to use instinct here. Magnet fishing, first time, launch, now. Oh, yes. <laughs> Do you get a tug on the line or...? Just pull it in. Oh, straight away? Yep. Oh, right, I thought we were going to wait. No, wait no, this is a lot of exercise, this. It's throw and pull. I see, so we just do it again and again? Yep, that's it. Simple as that. OK, well, we've got something there. That's... What's that? How can that be metal? That looks strange. Magnets are weird, aren't they? <laughs> OK, so we've got what I would call... Ah, I see what that is. It's a bit of piping. I think probably from uh, the Victorian age? <laughs> no, definitely not. Last week. <laughs> OK. Yeah. This is the interesting thing. That getting it off the magnet. Look at that. <laughs> the magnet is so powerful. Mm. Uh, nice little screw. You know what? Oh, there we are. That's quite interesting. That is a scaffold tube joiner. Oh, uh, OK. Somebody's front door key, there we go. Nail. There's a spring. Not interested in that so much. Oh, we have got quite a lot. This is a bonanza. I tell you what, <laughs> I'm starting to get into this. After his first throw. <laughs> My first throw, seriously. That, that, it's, it's funny, that doesn't sound as dramatic as it was, because, Nigel, you, you're, you're feeling you're really digging into recent history yeah. and you're finding all kinds of bits and pieces. Even a coin, even if it's a, a tuppence from 20 years ago, is interesting, isn't it? It is, yeah. Your enthusiasm was amazing, you know, and <laughs> it, it was nice to see that, that, you know, once you understood that you never know what's coming next, your enthusiasm to everything on that magnet was amazing. Well, I, I, I like the way that you weren't saying, look, Jeremy, it's just a load of old rubbish, because I was, even when I got a hairpin, I was going off the scale with excitement. <laughs> I just I didn't think we'd get anything. The very last thing to get was a bicycle, wasn't it? Oh, yes, the um, the bike that had been in there a long time because it was sort of like two-tone, wasn't it, the colour of it? It had been sinking in the silt and, um, yeah, it was another good find and another good thing out of the water. Well, we got it. We got a, 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 that moment on tape. AJ, a young lad who was there with his dad, found found the bike. Have a listen. So we'll, have it. We'll, have, we'll get some sound from this thing. <laughs> ah. All I say. OK. <laughs> AJ, what have you just pulled out here? Um, electric hire bikes. Do you get those a lot? Yeah, and the voice scooters and everything. 
Wow, look at this, that's insane. That's a great, that's, I suppose, not something you're gonna say that's a great find, but. No, but it's got a battery in it, so it's better out of the water. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's good, to, you don't want this in the river. Yeah, crayfish in there, look. <laughs> Where? In there. Oh my God, that's absolutely unreal. This crayfish, hello mate, has just been liberated from this line bike, which someone threw in the river and which AJ has hooked with this beautiful steel four pronged hook. And all these snails are now trying to work out what on earth has happened. And crayfish, you're about to go back in the water. Don't you worry, my friend, we won't leave you on the towpath. Yeah, it was, so that was just a, a hire bike. That's, uh, why would someone dump that in the canal, Nigel? It's one of those questions, why do people dump anything in the canal? I think a lot of these things probably end up from a drunken night on the way home from the pub where mm. people just find it amusing and unfortunately we're at a generation now where people don't think of the waterways, they don't think of the long terms of it and it's always been a good place to dump things that you shouldn't really have. To ask you the most obvious question, what's the most exciting thing you've ever found? Napoleonic ship's cannon. Wow. And how big was that? Um, it's about one metre ten. Um, it's pretty heavy, so let's put it that way. And um, that dates from around about 1810. And um, that came out of the river in Sheffield. But the, the, when I came to see you and your, your friend on the canal, the, you, you just found some German bullets, I, I seem to remember. Yes, they'd come out as well. They were uh, Mauser bullets. So um, it's just strange because we get a lot of things. We get a lot of German war stuff. And I think a lot of it was probably brought back as souvenirs uh. after the war. And I think that then people realised they shouldn't have them. And that's when they end up in the river because they don't want to sort of surrender them and admit they had them. So put them somewhere where you think no one's ever going to see them again. So you, you uh, found quite a bit of stuff the day we went out, as I mentioned, and this is, this is actually you running through some of your finds. What's the best thing you found today? Today? Um, a cooking pot, believe it or not. A cast iron cooking pot hanging over a fire. Probably about 19th century one. Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I see this. Look at that. That's, that's just, to me, that's beautiful. And that's, so that, why's it got a hole in it there? Yeah, yeah, I think it could be when the boiling like water yeah. and that, but you see it would have hang on a pole across the fire. Is that? And that's just today? That's proper cast iron. And things were made proper. <laughs> yeah, back in the day. And these are all dressmaker's pins. Just here <laughs> at this bridge, yeah. there's thousands of dressmaker's pins. The magnet's just covered in them. So what's your theory? Is just a one-off incident where someone threw all their stock away? Could have been there was a dressmaker's factory around here yeah. in the past, you see, um, because what you find with a lot of old industry, yeah. everything got disposed of in the waterways. It was yeah. terrible, really. Oh, but um, some areas we go to, we've had factories, we've pulled out five tonne yeah. of rubbish because really? it was just easy to throw it in there to get rid of it. Because you'd think they'd do a bit of dredging and, and sort it out, but... Yeah, they always say they do do dredging, but, well, they're obviously missing quite a lot of stuff, aren't they? So, Nigel Lamford of, of North Ants Magnet Fishers. I've already had a friend get in touch wanting your details, Nigel. I might have to pass them on. She wants. To, I think she wants right. to join North Ants Fishers. <laughs> right, OK. <laughs> Do you ever get... Is there any... She's not a snob, but is there any snobbery where people say, well, that's not what fishing is? Um, we generally get a mixed reaction. I mean, a lot of the fishermen actually thank us for what we're doing because we're pulling out snags, things like shopping trolleys and things yeah. like that. They lose a lot of equipment on things like shopping trolleys. We can pull a tro trolley out and there could be like 15 or 20 lures actually stuck to it because it snaps them up. I mean, the boaters are all good about it. Never really had a problem with fishermen, only if there's a match on, they don't want us near them, which I understand. And we, we just move on to another place. So, but never really had um, people being, you know, angry at us for doing it. Mm. So, you know, I think from the point of view, they're happy about it. And I think the waterways are improving across the country for the amount of tonnage that comes out every week. And yeah, well, of course, you never throw it back. I know you're very responsible. So, and you, you, you know, you, where you have to get rid of stuff, you put it in an appropriate place. So that, as you say, you're clearing the rivers and having an amazing amount of fun. It was just such a pleasure to go out with you, Nigel. Thank you.
really enjoyed it. Thank you, me too. And regards to all all your fellow magnet fishers. <laughs> I'll pass it on. <laughs> oh, thanks so much. So there we are, Nigel Lamford. You can look them up actually online. North Ants Magnet Fishing. They are so they they are very very busy with magnet fishing. Oh, 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 oh,